if you wanted to texture this, you know, I mean, you could like probably split this up into individual grass blades and then create a new material for each blade of grass, but that's kind of a bit tiresome. So the best thing to do would be just to create a simple color shader, make it green, and just stick that on the clump of grass and render it. Right, so that's your normal result. You could probably do something with a multi-shader, the MoGraph multi-shader, if you fracture this thing. But I'm going to use my shader because it's actually easier. If I just add the instant shader, you get this dialog. And you can basically just tell it to set one of these values, hue, saturation, lightness, uh, gamma, or blend to one of these gradients. Um, so if we set this gradient up for something a little bit grass-like, let's say something like this. I don't know if you can see that too well, but you can use this blend function to blend each individual grass element into this gradient. Okay, and you can change the seed. Each time you change the seed, you get a different combination. Basically, what's happened here is the fracture has split the clump of grass into individual objects and each individual object has got its own index and the index is used as a reference to decide which particular color here to use. So what else can you do? You can, um, instead of mixing with the color, you can keep this original shader color, which is basically this thing here. If I change this, for example, to a checkerboard, you can see each one's got a checkerboard. And then uh, we can use things like gamma. Um, let's change it, increase the gamma by 50%. Basically, what that's saying is add 50% of the default gamma to the original color, right? And the original color is this green in the color shader. So if I change that to blue, you're getting 50% gamma up or down based on whatever that color is or whatever that shader is. We can change in the same way we can change lightness. Okay, and this is saying up and down. What that means is, is increasing the lightness and also decreasing the lightness. If you just want to make things get brighter, then you ramp up yeah, and you just get bright shades of your shader. If you want to darken down, you just choose that. You get darker shades all the time. So let's keep it up and down. You can change the saturation, different shades, or the hue, up and down for some nice color variations. And you can combine these things. You know, you can blend that 50% into this gradient. And then you're modifying the hue, saturation, lightness, and gamma. So you've got quite a few combinations there. Let's ramp this up to get some nice bright grass and down to get some dark grass. All right, so let's get rid of hue, saturation, lightness. We're just going to check the uh, gamma. Right, so just by adjusting the gamma on its own, you can get some pretty decent variations. So gamma up is going to brighten things. Gamma down is going to darken things. Right. What's the advantage of this? Why is this so cool? Well, you can actually use it in um, in a cloner. For example, let's drag this cloner out and um, set up a landscape. We're going to clone this clump this fractured clump onto the landscape okay so drop that in there and you can see you've instantly got a completely random 
grass field. So there are no two blades of grass in this field which share exactly the same colour. Um, and to do that, I mean, I can't really think of another way that you could do that without this shader. It's basically giving you an unlimited derivative of this shader. Okay, by modifying its hue, its saturation, its light, its gamma. So let's blend this in. You see you get some yellowish grass. Let me just change the seed. It's a different grass. And that's just one example. I mean, you can use this for tons of stuff. It works with particles. It works with anything, really. It works well with MoGraph. And it's a really a useful alternative to the good old-fashioned uh, multi-shader. I mean, if I were to use a multi-shader in here, for example, let's see the multi-shader. Um, it's actually not going to do a lot. Let's put this on the cloner itself. Reset things. Trouble and woe. Ah, I know why, because I've got my multi shader in there clear. Right, so if you wanted to use a multi shader, you could probably do something like color, color, add more color. And just change these to maybe red, green, and blue. And then change the mode to index. And you get something like that. Now you can juggle that up and get that random. But you are never ever going to be able to colour these individual blades of grass with the multi-shader. Not going to happen, people. Not going to happen. So, um, as I said, the best thing to do is trash that multi-shader. Get rid of it. And start using the tools for d instance shader because it's the best thing since sliced bread. There you go, lots of random yet predictable colours. Different result, saturation, slightly different lightness, Get some dark stuff in there, and some gamma changes. Right, so that's it. That was the instance shader.